junctures from Liverpool, England. People all over the world are just beginning to talk about the Beatles. My model of business is the Beatles. You know, they were four very talented guys. One, two, three. To lead a better life. Hello, my name's Paul McCartney. This is Ringo Starr. This is John Lennon. I'm George Harrison. Welcome back to the Here, There, and Everywhere podcast. I'm your host, Jack Lawless. Today's guest is John Colshaw, a Liverpool-based artist known for his iconic and larger-than-life murals of the Beatles and other notable figures. John's Ringo Starr mural on the wall of the Empress Pub in Liverpool has become a beloved landmark in the area ever since he finished it last year. In this episode, we'll be discussing Colshaw's journey as an artist, his inspiration for creating murals of the Beatles, and the impact that the band has had on his life and work. We'll also dive into the Ringo Starr mural and explore how it has become a symbol of Liverpool's connection to the Beatles and the city's vibrant art scene. So let's jump right into our conversation. Hey, John, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me. How's it going today? It's good, yeah. I mean, you can see I've just finished work. Still got all my work clothes on. <laughs> awesome. So, John, you've created some pretty iconic murals around Liverpool. Can you tell us how you first got into art and painting murals? Um, so, for me, it was sort of an accident. It was not... Not a, not something I ever I didn't like go to college or anything to to study, but it's just something I had always done when I was younger. I always used to draw. I, I was always drawing pictures and always loved art, but I never knew that I never knew that you could do it as a job. I didn't know it was something that you could do. <laughs> I thought I thought you'd have to go and study to be an artist and things like this. But where I was working, they asked me if they asked me if any if if I knew anybody that could cover some graffiti on one of the walls outside. And because I had a, you know, a keen interest in that, I said, I, I said, I'll have a go. <laughs> <laughs> so I put my hand up and I had a little go myself. And then they gave me the job. They, I, I put a design forward and they picked my design and I got I got the job. And when I was painting, I just knew this this was something that I, that I wanted to do now. This, well, I was a decorator before that, just painting and decorating. And I knew I needed to have a change, so I decided to quit my job. And pursue a career in art. Awesome. Now, earlier we were just talking about how the weather in New York and Liverpool are pretty similar. Did you grow up in Liverpool? And how did you hear the Beatles for the first time? Yeah, yeah, I did grow up in grow up in Liverpool. So, uh, as you can imagine, in Liverpool, the Beatles are huge. They're, I think they're probably they're as big now as they was back then. So, I think I've. Everybody who's grown up in Liverpool has, has grown up with the Beatles. It's just something that we it's it's ingrained in us. And were you always a fan of their music? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I think probably I, there was never a time when I didn't like it. But only as I got older that I started listening to it for myself. You know. So so my dad my dad would always listen to the Beatles in in the house. So they'd always be on. They'd always be in the background. But it, probably when I got into my twenties, my early twenties, that I started actually listening to them. On my own. Wow. And now you've painted one of the largest Beatles murals in Liverpool or the world? It's it's definitely the largest in Liverpool. I don't know. I, I, probably the largest in the world. It's, it's pretty big. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and what's your inspiration behind your style when you go into these murals? Um, so, like I said, I've not, been a, I've not been an artist for too long. I've not been a, a, you know, a professional artist for too long. So I'm still at the point where I'm where I'm learning, I'm still, I'm still trying something new every time. So I think you're talking about the Ringo Starr one. So that Ringo Starr one was sort of a... The guy gave me an opportunity to paint whatever I wanted, basically, as long you know, as long as as long as long it had Ringo and as long as it was Beatles-themed. So I really tried to push my boundaries as much as I can, got as much colour. It was, I really wanted as much colour to be you know, as psychedelic as, uh, as, as, as I could get it, really. And that was something that I really wanted to push on on that particular project is is push my bodies and get get the get the face as lifelike as I could and and 
burst out with a lot of colour. And how long did that take you? I think that took, that took about eight days, nine days, something like that. Wow, that's pretty quick. And what was your favourite part about doing that? It, I, it's, it took about a year. It was about a year in the making. So from from the first talks that, that, that I had with the guy who owns the building to that actually coming to fruition was, was about a year. And so my favourite part was was getting the nod, was getting the okay notes and actually starting starting this. It was the biggest job. I'd never done anything as big as that. That was the biggest thing I'd ever done. And now you get to paint something that size and and not having no restrictions on what on what I have to paint. I, I can paint anything that I want to paint. It was amazing. And how does it feel to know that you've painted what is now an iconic part of Liverpool? It actually do you know what the feedback I got from that was insane. Like Ringo Starr posted it on his uh, on his socials personally. So that was a like a crazy moment. And then like I was in all the national newspapers and everything getting mad. It's like I said, it, I've not been an artist for that long. I didn't I didn't expect it, something so big to happen so quickly, you know. Would you say that that's your favorite moment of your entire art career? I think that's definitely it's got to, it's that's got to be at the top, yeah. But there's some, I mean, I painted Nelson Mandela again in Liverpool and the Mandela family came over for a visit and and came to see me when they, you know, and, and, you know, said how much they liked it and stuff and came to visit the painting. So that was another big wow moment. There's a, there's been a few big moments, like I said, and it's all happened so fast that I'd say it's hard to take it all in, you know, it's, it's some crazy things. Uh, Blondie, Blondie message. Messaged me and about a, a, a paint that I'd painted of her, you know, Debbie Harry. So she, all oh, crazy, crazy things. I've been on, on TV over in Egypt when I painted Mo Salah. I was on the news over in Egypt. I've been, uh, I don't know, just a lot of crazy stuff that you don't expect to happen in the first couple of years of of your new job, you know. And how long have you been doing this professionally? Professionally, about four years. Wow. Yeah, almost almost four years. Wow, that is awesome. And you know, being from Liverpool, how do you think that the Beatles have influenced the cultural identity around Liverpool and the arts there? Um, definitely the uh, the arts. They've had a profound effect on on all all the arts in Liverpool, not just music. You know, poetry and and just writing and screenplays and 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 painting. It's for a little while, while while the Beatles were around, Liverpool was like the hub of of art for the whole world, and we just took that and ran with it and, and let it grow and let it manifest into something. So there's no one in Liverpool, whether they're an artist or not, that doesn't have that little bit of flair about them, you know. Oh, absolutely. Now, do you think that Liverpool has changed since the Beatles broke up or since John Lennon passed away? Uh, I mean, I wasn't there. I don't know, but I don't think so. No, it seems to be. It's a very open place, Liverpool. It's a place where we where we welcome people and where everybody's happy and everybody's trying to help you get along in life and help, you know happy for your success. That type of thing. I think it's always been that way. Now, to ask you questions as a fan of the Beatles, do you have a favorite Beatles song or album? I mean, there's a lot. I, I sort of go back and forth between John Lennon and, and Paul McCartney as my favourites, but I think at the minute I like, I think the Long Gone Wind and Road is a masterpiece, isn't it? You know, it's something like that. But I don't, I've been getting into, as I got older, I've started being listening to a lot more George Harrison, which I didn't, when I was younger, you know, like in my 20 when I first started listening to, I didn't even know George Harrison was, wrote any of the songs. And so you get a little bit older and you look a little bit deeper into it. So I think, while well, my guitar gently weeps, it's just an insane song, you know. But that's, a, I don't know, I, I don't think I could uh, pick one out as, as, as a favourite. I don't know, maybe, but it's just too many to choose from. And when you were working on your Ringo Starr mural, were you listening to the Beatles as you were painting that? And how do you convey the feeling of the Beatles and put it into colors and art. I did yeah, I did listen to the uh, Jordan Jordan the process while I was making the design. 
I, I had yeah, I had the Beatles on constantly. To be fair, I, I I listen to the Beatles a lot anyway. They're just on me shuffle, you know, when I'm a when I'm designing. But when I was making that design, yeah, I had the Beatles just just on play. <laughs> awesome. And how many other Beatles murals have you painted? Uh, I mean, including indoors and outdoors, you know, in private homes and things like that. Probably 50, 60, a lot. Oh, know? wow. <laughs> but it's, there's, there's been a lot. Because the guy, the, the guy who had done that job for the Ringo Starr one, he owns a lot of hotels and they're all Beatles themed. He's a massive Beatles fan. So every time he opens, every time he buys New York, like an Airbnb, he hires me again. I go down and pick more Beatles <laughs> all, all over all the rooms. So he loves it. But, uh, just for myself, I've probably painted them about four or five times, but you know. When I first started as, as an artist and nobody was paying me to, I was just doing it for myself. Yeah, I probably painted the Beatles four or five times, like like that one in the, in the Vault of Triangle. That was, nobody paid for that. I was just off my own back. I wanted to paint it. Really? Oh, that's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't a job, no. That was just a, that was just a, a free wall, just a wall that you're allowed to paint on. So I went down and, and painted some stuff. And when did you paint that one? That, so that was um, 18 something like that it was a long time that's yeah, when when the very first started oh sorry no it wasn't it was in uh, probably 2019 because i painted a beatles mural on that same site and it got vandalized and so i went back and i but i'd had a year of practice so i was a, I was a little bit better at painting this time so i changed it and, and put it on a lot better there but i feel like this summer i'll probably change it again and for another Beatles mural there, but, you know, sort of just updated a little bit. Nice. And do you know what you're going to do to it yet? Yeah, yeah so I've got, a, I've got a John Lennon design ready to go on there. And sort of, my idea for it is I'm going to get let the public come and they'll have a section of the wall that they can paint their uh, their ideas on. And it, it's going to be, you know, an imagine sort of, that'll be the logo, that'll be the, the title for the for the piece. But I'm, I'm going to let people use their imagination and paint whatever they want on the on, on one side of the uh, one side of the mural. So I've got the design all ready to go. I just need the time. Oh, that's awesome! And that's going to happen this summer. In the summer, yeah, it'll be up some time in the summer. So, do you have any favorite memories that are associated with the Beatles and their music? See, like I said, growing up, there were always a sort of a background thing. I always remember my dad telling me. Uh, you know, we had all the LPs, you know, the old vinyls when 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 we were younger. I don't remember them having them. But apparently me and my brother used to use the vinyls to skid around the living room floor, you know. <laughs> to scratch all those vinyls on. So I mean we would have had all the originals, but no, me and my brother uh, broke them all. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You know, John, I was telling you before we started recording that I recently took a trip to Liverpool and your mural of Ringo Starr is like a huge attraction there now. How does it feel to know that people from far away come to see that? It's, honest to God, it's absolutely crazy. You know, um, because, like I said, the, the, the guy who owns it is a friend of mine, so I'm, I'm there quite a lot. And all these, you, you've seen yourself, there's a lot of tours going on around that area, you know, taxis and, and coaches and stuff. And if I'm walking past, the taxi drivers all know my face now. So they, uh, they stop and they, I'm, I'm constantly uh, in pictures stuck with Americans and Chinese people and stuff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, John, what are you up to now? Are you involved in any projects at the moment? I know you said you were thinking about retouching that Beatles mural in the Baltic Triangle this summer. What can you tell us about your next projects? Uh, well, Beatles themed, yeah. These are locked on. We'll, Actually, I'm going to be working with Mark, the guy from from the uh, the wall with, with Ringo Starr on. And he's talking about, he wants to do all of the Beatles, one one mural for each Beatle. And like, as big as we can. So I, I doubt we'll get a wall as big as, the, as big as that one, but he's got a lot of walls all around the city. So we want to try and get them as close to their, as close as the, to their childhood homes as possible and paint another big mural. So... That'll be over the next year or two. We we'll, we should have one for all, all of the Beatles. Wow, that is going to be really cool. And John, where can people follow along 
and follow you on social media. Do you have a website? Uh, I don't have a website. I need to get. I need to build a website. But I'm just on. I'm on all social media. So I'm on, on uh, Instagram, John Culshaw eighty six. Twitter, it's John Culshaw eight. Uh, I'm on you know Facebook and stuff like that as well. But yeah, they can find me. Awesome, and I'll include all those links in the podcast description so people could click on them as they listen. Thank you. And John, I just want to thank you again for coming on the podcast. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Oh, thanks for inviting me. It's really, really good to talk. Thank you, Ace. Thanks. Thank you all for listening to another episode of the Here, There, and Everywhere podcast, and thank you, John, for coming on and telling us your amazing story.